Many religions believe that the universe is created by an intelligent designer, existence is an experimental game, and God is the initial inventor of the game, and is now an all-knowing spectator watching as we humans misuse the power of choice he gave us. If God's a sports fan, his model sport for humankind is definitely NASCAR. The world he built is a very similar, ridiculously dangerous situation. A bunch of crazy rednecks, competitively wasting fossil fuels, and God's just watching from the stands, waiting to see the really good wrecks. The takeaway here is that if God is a NASCAR fan, he can't be that intelligent, can he? So even if he exists, intelligent design is not the preferred nomenclature. I'd call it military intelligent design at best. Even God didn't think through his exit strategy. Intelligently designed games end elegantly, like checkmate in chess. For this game of existence on Earth, his exit strategy seems to be nuclear holocaust. I'm just saying, if religion were to dial back their stance on the intelligence part, just go for the design claim, I'd still think they were silly, but noticeably less so. But they definitely don't do dialing back very well. Admitting fault isn't exactly in the church's wheelhouse. Granted, the faults they need to admit are often unspeakable, but I'm pretty sure that actually makes it worse. The point is that God's clearly not that smart, and it looks like devoutly religious people agree. Everyone I've ever met who takes a religion really seriously is always trying to justify absurd ways to bend the rules. Like God didn't read his own fine print. Great example, take butt sex. If you're willing to bend over the rules a little, anal sex is the number one virginity preservation method. I like to call this the poop hole loophole. Like this somehow softens the blow later when you're married, trying to make your sexual history sound less bad. No, I'm a legit virgin. I've had huge amounts of cock in the hole right next to it, but that vagina is clean virgin territory. Bullshit, even then you know they've played just the tip a few times. Speaking of just the tip, my circumcised friend from college named Israel, also a firm believer in the validity of the poophole loophole, was excellent at finding ways to just barely avoid directly breaking all those detailed orthodox Jewy rules he had to deal with. For example, he's not allowed to use any fire, electricity, or machinery of any kind on Shabbos, which is sundown Friday until sundown Saturday. So if we were all hanging out smoking pot on Friday, he couldn't partake. Unless, of course, somebody drew a bong head into the tube without inhaling it, and then happened by chance to leave that random glass smoke-filled column sitting on the table with a coaster over it, and then Israel happened to randomly choose to take one of his normal breaths of air while that coaster was quickly removed and that glass tube was on his face. This would just be a chain of unrelated events. The fire used to burn the pot to make the smoke to fill the tube was wielded by somebody else, and the bong water acted as a mystical justification barrier, completely separating the fire from whoever might have, by chance, been breathing too close to the bong afterward. Like, Jugad is up there going, shit, yeah, that, that bong water really ties my hands on this one. My boss, uh, God God, be up my ass about this if I smite this crafty stoner. And, as far as I know, Israel's never been smote, so clearly the loophole worked. And this encourages further abuse of the rules. So why are we surprised about priests raping kids? A bunch of priests sitting around trying to figure out loopholes. God says we can't have sex and can't masturbate. What options does that leave us? Roll with me on this. Keeping in mind the Lord works in mysterious ways. What if a kid gave me a Dutch rudder? We're not touching dicks. I'm touching my dick, and he's just working my arm. So I'm not jerking it, he's not jerking it, and everybody wins. I guess not that many priests are big Kevin Smith fans. All I'm saying, it seems like nobody's telling the priest side of the story. Maybe the rape thing was a little extreme, but clearly the current rules aren't sustainable. If I were a priest, I'd be lobbying for glory holes in the confessional booth or something. At least slutty sinners could try to buy indulgences with happy endings. There is another solution. It's nowhere near as fun as my glory hole idea, but probably more reasonable. The church could always just acknowledge that celibacy is ridiculous and goes against the biological instinct to reproduce, or at least the instinct to get laid. But this solution would never happen, because the church would end up having to reconcile its absurd universe view with contradictory things like evidence. Churches just don't do epistemology. Figuring things out with reason is a giant hassle compared to faith.